Hey everybody, welcome back to Bestie Health. Dr. Michael Braun here, internist, cardiologist, and healthcare advocate. Here to teach you about a really great concept that anybody who's concerned about their health, longevity, length of life, and disease prevention, which is probably everybody wants to know about. And that's the difference between chronologic age and biologic age. And do you know which one is more important for your health and overall longevity? It's not your chronologic age. It's actually your biologic age. So we're going to talk about the difference between the two, how it's important to you, and the science behind how it's been determined that you can actually learn what your biologic age is and you can actually control that biologic age. Whereas, as we all know, we can't control our chronologic age as much as we would like to, but those candles on the birthday cake are what they are. So how do we determine what our biologic age is? There are actually many biologic clocks out there, but the one I'm gonna talk about has probably been the most studied. There's even a Nobel Prize. 2009, a group of researchers won that Nobel Prize by telling us what a telomere is and how a telomere is truly the measure of our biologic age. So to understand what a telomere is very quickly, I want everyone to conceptualize a shoelace. The shoelace is the chromosome, which is your genetic material, which is your blueprint of your body. At the tips of the shoelace, there is a protective cap. At the tips of the chromosome, there is what's known as a telomere. And it actually serves the same purpose as the protective cap in the shoelace. It's there to protect the chromosome, protect your DNA. But the actual length of that telomere, of that protective cap, is literally your biologic age. But what's even more interesting and more important is we can determine the length and how quickly or slowly it shrinks with aging. So obviously, the longer the telomere is, the younger you are, and the slower that telomere shrinks is the slower you're aging, quicker telomere shrinkage is gonna determine quicker aging. So, as I said, you can look up 2009 Nobel Prize. The book I just showed you was written by the studier, the researchers from that study that won the Nobel Prize. So getting back to the telomere. So you can actually measure, it's not expensive, how old you are. But maybe what's more important is regardless of where you are at this moment, you can spend the next 10, 20, 30, or 40 years determining the length of that telomere. And basically, it's all lifestyle driven. So the reason I love to refer to that 2009 Nobel Prize and all my patients have, we have some conversation about that is because of how important it is to understand conceptually, we don't care so much about the chronologic age because you have no choice in the matter. You were born on a certain day, but your biologic age and how quickly or slowly you age is truly up to you. So I'm going to go down the concepts and the actual step-by-step -step issues that allow us to control our biologic age and who doesn't want to have a slower biologic age. So remember conceptually, the longer your telomere is, the younger you are. The slower your telomere shrinks, the slower you're aging. The Nobel Prize showed us this. I'm gonna go down from most important to least important. So let's talk about how we can control our aging. Well, any biologist will tell you there is a fountain of youth and that is called exercise. People that exercise even four times a week, 30 minutes at a time, had significantly longer telomeres than people that were sedentary. People that do aerobic training had significantly longer telomeres with slower telomere attrition than people that were sedentary. People that did high intensity interval training also had significantly longer telomeres than people that were sedentary. Now, weight training and even ultra endurance exercises, they also help keep people with longer telomeres, but not as much benefit as the shorter exercise aerobically or what we call HIIT training, which I just mentioned. So exercise is the fountain of youth. We not only see that exercise will keep you young with taut ulnar telomeres, but you'll decrease most disease rates. The research showed us that number two on the most important list to keep telomeres long is stress. Now, who doesn't have stress? We all have stress. But the grinding stresses, I'll give you an example, they studied parents that had ill children. Those people were aging four times faster than the control group based on telomere shrinkage and telomere length. The de stress of depression, the stress of poverty, the stress of abusive relationships, the stress of having a job you hate, the stress of having things that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Those stresses were showing a significant shrinkage of telomeres in a much more rapid way, and those people had much shorter telomeres in general. Number three on the list is going to be the food. It's not just the what, but it's gonna be the when. The what of what we eat is always going to be important as a whole foods diet. The opposite of what we would consider the sad diet, which is the standard American diet. 
So people that ate a whole food diet, either an ethnic diet, like a Mediterranean diet, are going to have significantly longer telomeres with much slower telomere attrition, meaning much slower biological aging. The when is also important what we eat. Everybody's heard about intermittent fasting. I like to use the term time-restricted eating. Not everybody needs to fast or even have a very small window of eating, but people that eat in a closed window, let's say even an 8 to 10 to 12 hour window versus an 18 hour window per day, are people that are going to have significantly longer telomeres with much slower telomere attrition. So remember, with food, it's the what and the when. Now let's get into some specifics beyond the top three things, which I just mentioned. One of them is going to be socialization. People that are isolated, people that have no interaction socially. Those people, unfortunately, had much shorter telomeres. People that had good social construct, family relationships, maybe even love in their life, those people were able to sustain much longer telomeres with slower telomere shrinkage. There's also elimination. Without being too specific, let's just say that having good bowel habits, having good uh, amount of urination per day where you get toxins out of your body, even sweating has been shown to prolong telomere length or give us prolonged telomere length with less telomere shrinkage as quickly. There's even things related to sleep. The sweet spot for sleep is let's say about seven hours, doesn't even be unremitting, but it's not just the seven hours of sleep that can be broken up even if you wake up once or twice, but it's also the consistency of your sleep, meaning going to bed at a regular hour, and the quality of your sleep, meaning being in a deeper sleep, getting into the stage four of sleep, has shown to be significantly beneficial to keeping telomeres, your aging clock longer, less telomere shrinkage, aging better. Some specifics, for instance, supplementation. People that take vitamin D to a good level have much longer telomeres generally. People that take good B vitamin supplements have much longer telomeres generally. Even coffee drinking has been shown to increase telomere length and decrease telomere shrinkage. You can even go back to the 2009 Nobel Prize, this book called The Telomere Effect, written by the actual researchers who won the Nobel Prize for teaching us about lifestyle and biologic aging in relation to telomeres. Now, there are other biologic clocks that are being developed, and some of them may even be more accurate, but a lot of them are very expensive to get done. You can get your telomere measured for probably less than $200, and you can know where you are now. So maybe you haven't had the opportunity to exercise. Maybe you have had a lot of stress in your life. Maybe you have been somebody that's been on a more American diet than a cleaner diet. It's even been shown that you can relengthen your telomeres with change in lifestyle and even some more esoteric treatments, which is not really going to be the purpose of this video now, but there are things like something called NAD+, uh, there's hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and there's other treatments that are being studied right now that may even not just slow down telomere shrinkage and slow down biologic aging, but can actually grow telomeres. Uh, a lot of it is based around there is an enzyme called telomerase. Makes sense. So the more telomerase we have in our system, the longer our telomeres tend to be maintained. So a lot of the things I told you about, whether it's the exercise, the food, the stress reduction, good sleep habits, certain supplementation, these things have all shown to increase telomerase, the active enzyme that helps keep telomeres long, and in doing so, keep you biologically slowed in your aging. So. Pretty cool that there's a concept where you can actually control your aging, not related to birthday candles on your birthday cake, and that whatever age you are, whether you're 20 or 50 or 80, you can now understand that you can control how quickly or slowly we age. And remember, it's not just about length of life, it's about quality of life, it's about disease development. People that age slower biologically, not only will they live longer, but they will be more functional as they age. Not only will you be able to maintain functionality as you age with longer telomeres and slower biologic aging, but there's many diseases that are associated with aging. And it's not just with chronologic aging, it's actually with biologic aging. So we know people that have shorter telomeres have a much higher rate of cancer, much higher rate of brain diseases, much higher rate of arteriosclerosis and vascular diseases. And on the reverse of that, people that have certain diseases such as cancer, will have much more rapidly shrinking telomeres. People who have any metabolic insufficiency, such as diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, high carbohydrate diets, they also have shorter telomeres. So it's both cause and effect. But the beauty of it to me, and why I talk to all my patients about biologic age, is that we have a lot of control over it. And wouldn't it be nice to get old, but to get old in a functional way, prevent those diseases that we all dread, and there's a way to do it.
understand your telomeres, and you can understand how you can also age in a healthy, slow way. I hope this helps. See you on the next video.